Sunny Ofehe is geboren en getogen in de Niger-Delta. Vijftien jaar lang al voert hij een vreedzame strijd voor een beter leven van zijn landgenoten. Sunny demonstreerde samen met de wereldberoemde activist Ken Saroviva. Hij kreeg in Nigeria de doodstraf. I was tortured, I was subject to all sort of inhuman treatment. And the, the, irony, the irony of it all was that when you are captured like that, your folks, your family, they don't even know where you are, they don't know your whereabouts. So it's easy to kill you and nobody will know about. Sunny ontsnapte uit de gevangenis en vluchtte naar Nederland. Vanuit Rotterdam blijft hij doorgaan met vreedzaam protest. Does it help the kidnapping to change the situation of the Nigerian people? Uh, yeah, for most people they say, okay, well, it's, uh, I've had arguments with people, but I believe strongly that it has never helped because we've not gained anything. We've not, it's, it's not really, it has not really given us any sort of achievement that we should be proud of. Attention? Uh, well, attention. Attention without solution is almost useless, but uh, then this is negative attention. De olieoorlog in Nigeria kent voorlopig alleen maar slachtoffers. Dat zijn de bewoners van de Niger-Delta, de medewerkers van oliebedrijven en het milieu. Mr. Obstelten, de Dutch minister van Justice. At this point in my life, I have gone through so much with my family. More than three years, I am still waiting for justice to be served. In the course of the waiting, one of the members of parliament did actually send you a parliamentary questioning, which you replied that, the, 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 that my case will follow due process. At this junction, I really believe that my case is not following due process at all. And I plead with you to please do something so that this case can have a closure, so that I can move forward and the justice system can also move forward. Thank you. Well, actually, um, uh, one of the major things that I do is to raise awareness as to, uh, to the environmental situation of the people of the Niger Delta. Um, you know, the Nigeria is the eighth largest. Uh, exporter of crude oil in the world and the, this oil, this crude oil come from the Niger Delta area which uh, incidentally is also where I, I come from in Nigeria. So having come to the Netherlands I, I realized that a uh, majority of the people are not aware as to the uh, environmental devastation that has been caused by oil extraction carried out by international oil companies such as Shell, Chevron, Mobil, any uh, and some other few ones that I cannot name right now. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I do is to do a, a documentary, a short documentary film, uh, to show the situation in those communities. And in one of those occasions, we, we wanted to film uh, the illegal oil bunker situation and use that film uh, to prove that uh, 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 officials from Shell and also officials from the Nigerian government are involved in these activities and while trying to uh, look for uh, the, the, the sponsor for the making of this documentary, I came in contact with uh, a journalist who worked at the time with the NRSC Handelsblatt, one of the biggest uh, newspapers in the Netherlands. And so I had to do uh, some uh, uh, logistic arrangement from the Nigerian uh, end and, and so that brought me in contact with a few facilitators who were now, who I was now talking with on the phone, you know, to explain to me uh, what we needed to do, where we needed to go, and what it entails, what are the details, what are the kind of uh, facilities we might require, and how much those facilities will cost. Uh, cost. In, 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 the, in the course of doing that, uh, I was wiretapped in those period, and three of those wiretaps were now used as a, as a content uh, to now put terrorism charge uh, against me and the terrorism charge was based on the conspiracy to commit terror acts that I was inciting people in the Niger Delta to blow up oil pipelines that belongs to Shell, which is actually not true because I was only doing the job which every international journalist does when they go to uh, areas that are considered very unsafe and this is uh, that is where the charge of terrorism 
came about in my trial, which is currently ongoing in the Netherlands. I was arrested in February 2011 when 25 uh, thereabout police officers uh, came to my house in the early hours of the morning and I was taken into custody. I was locked up for two weeks and, uh, and then I was released but told that I was still a suspect and uh, we had our first performer hearing in September of 2011 and then the performer hearing did not reach a conclusion so we were asked to come back again to court so the second performer hearing actually took place in december of 2011 and ever since my arrest i've always been saying that my arrest is politically motivated because i don't see myself as a criminal and and the indictments and the and the uh, 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 investigation that followed it will it will it, it will be uh, wise to recall here that actually I was followed for 18 months and all sort of investigative tactics were carried out in the course of investigating me and a lot of police officers were also involved in the investigation against me and and at the end uh, uh, I think that a charge of terrorism was just too high in comparison with uh, what they try to frame so I see my case as politically motivated uh, based on prejudice uh, profiling and premeditation and and three years from this very month I am still yet to face a trial and there have been so many things that have been happening in the course of this whole year I've tried to prove my innocence by even we later discovered that even the the the, the, the wiretap conversation was falsified the prosecutor in that case Mr. Fiat Furing uh, we realized that he falsified evidence to justify terrorism charge and I, I, I went to court on that note under the article 812 and even when my trial had not started so right now uh, in November of 2000 and 2013 I, we, we, we got a date to appear in court on the 5th and 6th of March for the main trial and just uh, less than three weeks before that date we got an email from the court telling us that the case has been suspended because the files that came in were not complete and also that the police officer who headed the investigation against me who the court agreed that we must summon as a witness also said that he was not available on those dates so now we don't even know when the case will go to trial and this is that means it is getting over three years and I think this is too long because there is a saying that justice delay, justice denied.